Welcome to Retro Arcade Reviews, my name is John and in this episode we will be reviewing the arcade classic Splatterhouse. Splatterhouse is a side-scrolling beat-em-up that was developed by Namco in 1988. Honestly, until recently I never knew that Splatterhouse was an arcade game. I used to think it was a Turbo Graphics exclusive. It was one of the few titles I had for the system and it was awesome. And I thought it was pretty scary too. I know it's kind of laughable these days with games like Resident Evil, Silent Hill, House of the Dead and so on, but back then I never saw a game like that before. It was just different in terms of content, violence, and gore. This is because the game's creators wanted to make a serious horror game, which caused a lot of backlash with Namco, resulting in some alterations during the planning phase and even further edits for the home ports. This is why there weren't many arcade cabinets out there at the time. I mean, you have to remember, this was pre-Mortal Kombat. You see, back in the 80s, there was like an unusual boom in horror movies and according to the game's producers, they found it odd that video games were forbidden to show some of the same things. Motivated by creating a realistic horror game, they referenced a lot of different horror movies from this era. According to chief planner Katsumi Mitsuno, during location tests, I heard kids saying, oh I know this, this is from this or this is from that. When I heard that, it was like bullseye just as we hoped for, and a big smile came to my face without me even realizing it. This is possibly why the main character bears a striking resemblance to Jason Voorhees from Friday the 13th. In this game, you have to fight your way through seven stages of creepy monsters, ghosts, undead creatures, and other things I really can't define. I mean, what the heck is that, really? I mean, it's like a man slug or something? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. Other than your mitts, you can pick up weapons that will help you along your way, like cleavers, 2x4s, wrenches, shotguns, and axes. You can also perform a devastating slide kick if performed properly. You have 5 hearts so try not to get touched. The game's not so difficult so you'll be able to breeze through it with enough quarters. Now, there's a lot of conflicting information online concerning the background and story of the game and that's because a lot of the story and lore from the sequels and ports gets intertwined with the original arcade game. But the original story goes as follows. Now this is without spoilers. A couple, Rick and Jennifer, gets caught in the rain and they seek refuge in a nearby mansion. Next thing you know, the door Doors close and a woman's scream is heard. When you start the game, a strange mask hovers over Rick's unconscious body and places itself onto Rick's face, beginning your journey into the mysterious cursed house in search of Jennifer. And that's it! That was all there was to the story. All this terror mask lore and Rick and Jennifer being parapsychology majors investigating the mansion of Dr. West who was like the greatest parapsychologist on earth was fluff added in for the Turbo Graphics port. Originally, there was no backstory for the characters. In a 1988 interview in NG Magazine, Mitsuno stated, we had wanted to include a lot more backstory and plot but there wasn't enough memory. Splatterhouse was ported over to the TurboGrafx-16, FM Towns, and the PC. It's also included in the Namco Museum compilation for the Switch. The improvement of tech and graphics during the late 80s led to arcade and home consoles to slowly start integrating more adult themes into gaming. I think it's easy to focus on the violence and gore of Splatterhouse, but looking at it in terms of gaming history, the game was a departure from your usual in terms of trying to incorporate more adult themes like the macabre into mainstream gaming. I mean, this would have happened inevitably because of the aging gaming population at the time, but without Namco exploring the boundaries of acceptable gaming standards, adult themed games would have been released much later rather than sooner. So if you're feeling brave, grab your mask and 2x4s, get into that house, whack some zombie heads onto the wall, and let me know what you think.